In today's video, you're going to learn how to create this circular image effect with Photoshop. So we're going to turn this image into this. So if you follow along with this tutorial, by the end of this video, you'll have an image that will look just like this. And if you like these types of videos, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload the next video. So with that said, let's get started. So if you wanted to follow along with this tutorial, you can find all the images we're about to use in the description below. So go to the first image and simply right click and copy the image. Then open up Photoshop and click on create new. And Photoshop should automatically pick up the width and the height of the image that you just copied. So you don't need to change anything here. So just click on create. Then press Ctrl V or Command V to paste the image. You can also go up to edit and click on paste. Then you also need to make sure that you have the layers panel all opened. So if you don't see this layers panel, go up to windows and click on layers right here. Then we need to rename this layer from layer one to landscape. So to rename the layer, simply double click on it and just type in landscape. Now what I'm gonna do is draw in the circle. So for this, we're gonna go up to the elliptical marquee tool or it's, or it's also called the selection tool. So if you click and hold, there'll be a few options right here. There's rectangular and elliptical. So choose the elliptical tool right here. Then as you draw, make sure you hold shift because if you don't hold shift, it's gonna draw an oval. If you do hold shift, it's gonna draw a perfect circle. So draw a circle just, to, uh, just about to the point where it shows parts of the sky and the landscape as well. And you can also move it just about here. So I'm trying to make sure I can see a lot of the sky and I can also see a, a bit of the pathway as well. So maybe the pathway can come out from here. So that looks good. Then we're gonna go down to the mask tool right here. So the mask tool down at the layers panel, is like a little circle and a square icon. And when I click on that, what it does is, it keeps everything that's selected and it hides everything that's not selected. So what we had selected was the circle and uh, everything that wasn't selected was outside of the circle. So we've got this effect. Now what I can do is just move this into the center just about here. And also now I want to reveal the pathway coming down here. So the way we do that is by creating another layer. So this layer is going to be a copy of landscape. So to create a copy of landscape, we're going to click and drag it into the new layer icon. And that just creates an extra copy. So now there's these two boxes right here. So there's the image box and the masking box. On the landscape copy layer, I don't want the masking layer to be there. So I'm simply gonna right click on the masking box and then uh, click on delete layer mask. Now everything just comes back to normal. But if I lower the opacity on the landscape copy layer, you can see the circle that we had before. So what I'm using this landscape copy layer for is just to use as a guide to help me reveal the path on the landscape layer. So what I've got here is the landscape layer. And if I press and hold Alt or Option key if you're on a Mac, and then click on the masking box, you can see what's revealed and what's hidden. So anything that's white is hidden in this layer, and uh, I mean revealed in this layer, and anything that's black is hidden. And if I press and hold Alt again or Option key, click back on it, then it just comes back to normal. So if I choose the masking box right here, and I'll choose a paintbrush, uh, maybe about this size right here, and I'll choose a white color to reveal. And if I paint in that masking box, so make sure you're painting in the masking box, not the actual image itself, it just simply reveals it. So I'm revealing the path. So now if I press and hold uh, Alt key or Option key, or if, you, if you're on a Mac, and you can see what I've revealed here. So it's just as simple as that. So it's just, it's it's better to use the masking tool uh, instead of deleting it because if, uh, if we make a mistake, we can go back to it. And also if we need to reveal something, we can reveal it like this. So this is just an easy way to do so. So now there's all of these, all, all of these parts here are quite easy to select, but there's those little sharp edges that we need to select around here. So let me just make the brush a little bit bigger and just select all of these right here. And also if you don't have this hard edge, if you have like a soft edge coming like this, like a soft selection, all you need to do is just increase the hardness on the brush to 100%. But 
but there's these little tough corners that we need to get around and some people kind of you know zoom in and they create like a small brush and they get into those corners but that takes a lot of time so what you can do is you can choose the uh, image layer again uh, go up to this tool right here so if you click and hold there's magic wand tool quick selection tool and object selection tool what we want to choose is the quick selection tool so what this does is let's just zoom in a little bit here i'm going to choose the quick selection tool it just selects some uh, all the similar colors around where i click so you can see i just click here and it just selects something around that um, around that that's similar so this is just a quick and easy way to just make a selection so i'm going to zoom out a little bit now you can see it's um, fully accurately selected the path so now i can go back to um, the landscape layer right here choose the brush tool and i can just reveal all of this so now let's deselect everything by pressing Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac. And let's hide the landscape copy layer by clicking on this little eye icon. And let's zoom out a little bit. And you can see that's what it looks like. So that looks pretty good right now. Uh, we can also do some adjustments later on, like adding some shadows here and there, but we can do all of that later. So I'm actually quite happy with that. Now we can start adding in a person kind of walking into the, um, into the circle. So to do that, we're gonna go back to uh, the, the second image you can also find this in the description below and simply right click and copy the image make sure you copy the image not copy image address so it's copy image then let's go into Photoshop and click on uh, Control V or command V to paste the image and you'll also notice this layer the landscape copy layer so we don't need that anymore so I'm just gonna simply delete that and I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller uh, the, uh, the layer one actually before I make it smaller let me just rename this to uh, person walking and I'm just gonna make it slightly smaller by pressing Control T or command T if you're on a Mac so that looks good and if you can also just use the opacity tool just to make it slightly smaller just to see what it uh, what the person will look like so I think that looks good there so I'm gonna hit enter there and just up the opacity again then what I'm going to do is choose the rectangular selection tool and just select the subject here. So we've got the subject and then simply press Ctrl C to copy or Command C if you're on a Mac and then Ctrl V or Command V to paste the image. So now we've got another layer and I'm going to name this one person walking subject. So I've hidden the original one and just revealed this copied one right here. So the reason why I did that is because I want to make it easier for Photoshop to select this subject because if I had this before it's going to get confused as to what the subject of this image is. So let's hide this again and choose person walking subject layer. Then we're going to choose the selection tool right here and then right here up, up at the corner you'll see select and mask. So when you click on that you'll open up this new window and when you click on any one of these three tools on the left hand side you'll notice select subject. So click on select subject. And this is a new tool in, on one of some of the latest versions of Photoshop. It goes through the image or the layer that you've selected and it figures out what the subject of that image is. So it's not always accurate, but in this case, it's quite obvious because it's just a person in the middle walking and it's accurately selected the subject. And you can also take this further by clicking on refine here. So let's say the, the subject that you selected also has some hair. If you click on refine hair, it's, it's also going to accurately select the hair as well. So now if you click on OK, you can see the subject is selected. And then if you click on the masking tool, it's going to keep everything that's selected and hide everything that's not selected. So that looks really good. So I'm actually quite happy with that. And the color is already kind of matching. But if you do want to um, make the colors match a bit more, there's a little trick you can do. So we, what we want to do is make the subject uh, match the color of the background. So to do that, I'm going to select the person walking um, uh, layer right here, go up to image, adjustments, and then go down to uh, match color. Oh, so I made a mistake there. So I'm actually glad I made this mistake. So what I did there is I had the masking box selected. So this is the common mistake people make. They always have the masking box selected. So you have to have the image selected right here. So that's in the layers panel. 
So make sure you select this and not this. So select this and then go up to image, adjustments and match color. Then what you need to do is click on source. So the source right here is untitled one. So that's the name that I've given this project. I probably should have named it something different. So it should have been named something like circular images, something like that. But in this case, it's untitled one. And the layer, the source that I want to use is landscape. So this is the landscape and you can see immediately the color changes. So if I can turn up the uh, luminance right here, so it makes it slightly brighter or darker. So I want to make it a little bit brighter. And I can also turn up the color intensity. And now it's much more matched. It's way more matched with the, with the uh, background. So now if I click on OK, and this is what it looked like before, and now this is after. So before and after. So it does make a, a quite a big difference. So now it's looking good already. So I just want to add one more thing which is a drop shadow on the circle so for this i'm going to create a new layer and i'm going to uh, uh, go up to the marquee tool right here and i'm just going to draw in a circle so try to get get it to be as accurate as possible with the circle uh, of what, what you created now it doesn't have to be too accurate because we can adjust it later on so just move it exactly where you want it to be so it looks good there I'm just going to choose the paint bucket tool, choose a black color, and just fill it in black. And then you can press Control T, and you can kind of zoom in as well, just to make the make sure this is accurate. Just press Control T, and just simply kind of move it all into place. So I, I want this to be slightly in the background, so just about uh, just about hidden right there. Yep, so it looks good. Then I'm going to move it slightly down. So this is obviously a shadow, so it's going to be slightly further down. So I'm just going to name this layer shadow. And I'll hit enter. Now I'm going to create an extra copy of the shadow and hide the original shadow layer. Now, now I'll show you why we do that soon. So we've got this extra one hidden and we've got this new one. So choose this new layer and then go up to uh, filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. So now it just blurs out the edges and it gives you this nice shadow effect. So you can make this even more blurry. So you can make it really blurry like this. So there's going to be two shadows. So one is going to be quite a blurry shadow like this one. So I'll hit OK here. And now I'll just zoom out, see what that looks like so far. So if it's a bit too intense, you can actually lower the opacity right here. So it just lowers the intensity of that or the spread of that shadow. And then I'm going to create another copy of the shadow layer. And then I want a dark a shadow where, and, and I want this one to be a bit smaller. So it just creates a bit more of a realistic, realistic effect. So if you go up to filter again, go down to blur, Gaussian blur. Now make this one a bit smaller. So just about there looks good. And I'll also lower the opacity so it's a bit too dark. And I'll also move it up a little bit more. So this is what it looked like before. And this is after so you can see it's slightly it does make a slight difference when I add in that shadow so let me make it a little bit darker maybe there we go yep so it looks good so now let's zoom out so all of that looks really good now now the last thing I want to do is add some backgrounds and also have some sh um, clouds coming out of the sides so for the background I'm just going to give it a slight grayish or bluish uh, background so I'm going to pick the color picker tool and choose a blue color from here and I'm going to make it even lighter blue so maybe about there is good and I'll uh, choose a uh, create a new background layer so I'm just going to name this background and I'll choose the paint bucket tool and just fill it in with that color so that looks good and I'll also maybe choose a darker blue now as well so yeah maybe that blue is good and I'll create another layer and I'll name this gradient. So this just creates a more of a realistic effect. So I'm going to choose a, a brush and I'm going to make it quite big. So it needs to be yeah, about that size there. I'm also going to make the hardness of this brush to be at 0%. So now if I just kind of click on just the side of it, you can see it kind of creates this kind of gradient. 
So it's really up to you if you really want to do this. It sometimes looks really good, sometimes it doesn't look that good. And if I make it a little bit bigger by pressing Control T, you can see it kind of gives it a nice gradient. So instead of like one flat color, it just has this nice gradient. So this is what it looked like before and after. So I'm actually happy with that, so I'll keep it that way. Then let's add in the shadows. So for the shadows, we're gonna use some brushes. So I've left a link to this website in the description below. It's called brusheasy.com. And it's a great website to download free Photoshop brushes. So all you need to do is just come in here and search up clouds and you can download all of these brushes here for free. The only ones you have to pay for are the ones that have this green band around it, which um, you don't need to download. So those are the only ones that are not free, but most of them are free. So when you download it, just click on free download. You just need to watch um, an ad for like five seconds. A zip folder will download. And then you just need to open up that zip folder. So there it is. Just open up the zip folder and within the folder, there will be this uh, file here called ABR or even CBR. So you just need to double click on it and it just instantly installs the cloud brushes. Now, when you click on the brush tool and go up to the brush type right here, and if you scroll all the way down, you'll see a new um, uh, set of brushes called clouds or whatever uh, was named. So I've got some brushes right here that I've already installed. And so what I'm going to do is just simply choose a white color. And I'm going to go all the way to the top. And I'm going to make this brush or this cloud a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to simply just click right here. So right now that, that isn't that dark. So let me just undo that by pressing Control Z. So I'm going to click and I'm going to click the same spot again and one more time. So it just makes it a little bit darker and, and the uh, clouds a bit more visible. So you can kind of move this cloud around, maybe place it over here, or you can make it slightly smaller. So maybe I'll make it that big. Yep, so that looks good. And then I'll type in, uh, I'll rename this layer to cloud one. So I usually create a new layer for each cloud. So I'll create another one and I'll call this one cloud two. And this time I'll choose a different cloud. So maybe I'll try this one this time. So I'll click on one, two, three. So oh, that's got this hard edge around it. So I'm not really uh, liking that um, cloud too much. So let me try another one. So maybe I'll try, that's the same one. Yeah, let's try this one here. So I'll make this one a little bit bigger. And I'll go one, two, three. Yep, so that doesn't look too bad. And I can also add this behind the other cloud as well. So it kind of adds a bit more of a realistic effect. So I'm happy with that right there. And I'll add another cloud. So I'm just going to keep adding more and more clouds. So I'm going to name this one cloud three. So what I'm going to do is just speed up the video and just keep adding some clouds. And then I'll see you at the end. So finish doing the clouds right here, but you'll notice some of the clouds have this edge right here, like a straight edge. So what you can do in this case is create a new layer mask right here, and then choose, I mean a masking box, sorry, not a layer mask, and then um, go, go choose a brush um, that's a cloud brush. So just pick like a small one, maybe, uh, yeah, but no, that's also got like an edge. So choose a brush that doesn't really have an edge. So let's try this one. Uh, so this one's okay, uh, but I think a better one, kind of a bigger one might be better. So let me choose maybe this one right here, see what this one looks like. So I think this one's a bit better. So it's got an edge on the other side, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna choose a black color to hide and make sure you're on the masking box right here. And I'm just gonna hide that edge. So it just kind of makes it look more um, realistic, like a real cloud. So now that looks much better. And there it is. So that's how you create this circular uh, effect with Photoshop. And I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, make sure you guys comment down below. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like button and also hit the notification bell. Uh, so you, you'll be notified when I upload next week's video. So I'll see you next week.